All right, we're going back into tables. A few videos ago when I introduced tables, I had somebody get on me. He said that I spent more time talking about pivot tables than I did tables. Well, there's one thing about tables is that they do a very important function, but there really isn't a whole lot to say about them. They are like a glue that allows our spreadsheet and our data to flex and still hang together. But still, there are some things that I can show you about tables that I didn't show in the previous video. So let's do a brief review about what a table can do as opposed to a range of data. Here is a range of data and we wanna add in some formulas. We've got our fee, $90, then there's an admin fee and then a net that we wanna calculate and then we wanna get a total based on whether it's been paid or not. Here is the admin charge. Let's do our calculation equals $90 times the admin charge, $1.44. And in order to get this down the whole column, I need to have an absolute cell reference for L2. So that's F4. Now I can copy this down the whole column, double click that. Now, the net equals the $90 minus the $1.44 cent. And I have to double click to get it to go down. Now I want to know if the person has paid, bring me over that net amount equals if, open parentheses, if the paid equals yes. So that's double quote, capital Y, double quote, then bring me back G2. Otherwise, remain empty. So that's gonna be a double quotes. Close parentheses. Right, double click and we can format this as money. Good. Since this is a no, this cell for Sandy remains blank, as does for Gretchen. So we had to do a lot of work here in order to get this all set up. And then we have more people here that we wanna add in. Okay, so we've got to go and double click all of these cells in order to get this data to fill in the rest of this range. Let's go over to tables. Here is the data as a range. Let's put this data into tables. Inside the range, we want to go to format as table and we can pick whatever we want. Let's go with this blue here. All right, and then let's go over here with the admin charge and put this in a table as well. Format as table. We can make this gray. All right, and I'm gonna get rid of these grid lines. View, no more grid lines. Now let's see what tables can do. Let's first calculate the admin charge. Equals the $90 times the admin charge, enter, look at that. Highlight this column and go to home and turn this into a money formatting. All right, notice how the table brought our calculation down the entire column automatically. We didn't have to double click anything. And that's important for when we add more data, remove data, the table will flex with us. Now let's calculate the net equals the $90 minus the $1.44, enter, good. Now let's look at the difference between the two formulas when you have a range versus when you have a table. Here, 
we have D2 minus F2 calculating $88.56. And we can put our cursor up in the formula bar and it will show us what's being highlighted. Going over to the table, the formula says at fee minus admin fee. That means something. Fee, $90. Admin fee, $1.44. Put our cursor up here and we can see what's highlighted. So the table is giving us something meaningful inside our formulas. If something was off, we'd be able to see it. Suppose our table looked like this and we knew that this zero made no sense at all. We could click on the formula and we could see fee minus fee. We got a problem and we know what's wrong. We're not supposed to be minus in fee from fee. It's supposed to be fee minus admin fee. Now let's do our final tally equals if the paid column equals Y, then bring back the net, otherwise stay empty. Close parentheses, and there we go. Now let's look at another bit of nomenclature. We calculated this admin fee, and the formula says fee times table four admin charge. Where is table four? Let's look over here, table four, that's table four. We can go to design tab and rename this. Let's call this admin rate. Let's go back to this formula, fee times the admin rate table, the admin charge. So this is telling us even where the number came from. It came from the admin rate table. This at symbol is telling us that it came from this table that we're in now in the fee column. Now let's add some more people. There you go. The table took care of it. This kind of flexibility that tables give you, it will help you stay out of trouble. It will help you avoid errors because with this one over here, when we look at the range, what if we forgot to double click and go down and fill in the rest of this data? What if we want to add more columns? We need to change some things. We've got to really take care of our formulas here. Let's throw this data into a pivot table. Insert pivot table. Want it in a new worksheet, okay. Let's put the names in rows and then the groups in columns and let's put the net in the values. So once everybody is paid, if everybody is gonna pay, these are the numbers that we're looking at. And then if we did change a number, let's go back and change this charge. The charge is actually 1.95. Everything updates, go back to our pivot table, refresh, all of the numbers change. And I'm going to change this to a better formatting. Well, oh, there we go. That's how a table can help us. Let's do one other thing. And I'm going to introduce you to the VLOOKUP. Let's insert a column here. And I'm going to unhide what I put over here. Unhide. Let's delete this. Here are the groups and the leaders of those groups. And CJ is the leader of two groups, both C and D. Let's put that data into a table, 
format as table. Let's make it orange. Table does have headers. Okay. So what we want to do is bring over the leader of the group into this table. What do we want to put it? Let's put it between group and admin fee. So I'm going to click in this header here and right click the insert table columns to the left. And I'm going to call this leader. And I'm going to get rid of these filter buttons. Next, I want to name this leader table. Go over here, click inside this table, go to design instead of table five, call this leaders. Now let's do a VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP, open parentheses, lookup A, that's our lookup value, comma, our table array. Our table array is here, comma. Now it wants a column index number. Which column do we want to bring back? We want to bring back the JT since the group is A. The leaders are in the second column. So that's going to be two, comma, and we want an exact match. So we're going to type false. Close parentheses, enter. Now we know our leaders for each group. And we can go back to our pivot table. Inside the pivot table, right click, refresh. Now we have our leader data. Let's put in, let's remove name and put in leader see cj has the two groups one other thing i want to show you about tables is that you can use slicers with tables slicers are basically filters but they're a lot easier to use than filters with the cursor inside the data table go to insert slicer and let's get a slicer for group leader and paid okay now let me clean this up a bit let's filter for who's not paid no these people and we can easily see that one of CJ's groups has not paid and four of JT's people. Let's look at everybody who has paid and let's look at JT's group and I'm going to click here so I can do a multi-select and look at DX's group and I can even go up here and sort go to data and I'm going to sort a to Z. Now DX is here, JT is here. All of this is possible with tables. So going forward, we're going to make a lot more use of tables and I will go back and show you more details about that V lookup. All right. See you in the next video. Close parentheses. Look at that. Look at that. Blank because that condition was false. Double click.